Welcome back to another episode of Holistic Hearts. I am your host, Kristen Chadwick. Hey guys, we are continuing to do this deep dive into deep waters. And what I mean by that is that Psalm 42, deep cries out to deep. And this is those things that the way I can describe deep waters is let's get into some meaty conversation. There's a section in scripture that talks about infants are fed off of milk for so long. And as we mature and grow, we are fed by pure meat. And I have felt this big push for us as believers, as people who are hungry for more, to come to the table, to come and taste and see that he is good. And part of that is experiencing and asking questions and digging deep and doing our own seeking of what does that mean? What is this meat that we are partaking in? And that is the heart of this conversation today. And you guys, I'm like genuinely nervous. <laughs> and it is my prayer as we talk about this deep subject, which is the gift of tongues, speaking in tongues, that you will do your own, your own research, your own asking, your own prayer, and that you would see what this gift was originally designed for. And so I, I humbly come before you. I do not know much. <laughs> I am an infant as I learn, but I'm so hungry to learn more. And I'm right there with you, even 10 years into this exploring, what does it mean to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? And so I just want to lay that that down to you. But first, I want to say thank you to the sweet people that are partnering with me to continue Holistic Hearts and that are cheering me on through the buymeacoffee.com. It is such a gift to see those pop up in my inbox and it says, hey, you've got $25. Anything helps, you guys. And, and I say that in a way of it just shows me that you value what is coming to the table. And so I, if you feel like this has been helpful for, for you, $5 is awesome. I could put ads on here. I could put, you know, other things, but I, I have chosen buymeacoffee.com and it's just a way for you to come alongside and partner what we're doing here, which is stirring up the bride of Christ, stirring up people that are hungry for more. So thank you so much for partnering with me in that. I also wanted to let you know that the Lord has been pressing on my heart something of bringing back and cultivating the spirit-led coaching here on Holistic Hearts. We have been doing a lot of deep work and what started Holistic Hearts? I started at the very beginning. I was very passionate about my listeners discovering their kingdom identity, their mission, their purpose, their calling in life. And the Lord has really reminded me and opened back up this door of providing that space for you to learn and grow and to have a group coaching experience where we can connect to Holy Spirit and a whole different level alongside other people in a community and with each other. And one of the ways that we're going to do that and what I'm offering is starting on November 3rd, we are going to do a series through a book called Questions for Jesus. And it's one of the most beautiful ways that I have found that is helpful to have this tool to connect with Jesus on a daily basis. And along with that, as we go through that book, we will have our weekly coaching where we really unpack and I will help coach you through your own journey of connecting with him. So we're going to use scripture, journaling, encounters, and you guys, this is how you finish 2023 with intention and purpose and really taking the time 
to develop and dig those roots deep. Okay, so I hope to see you there. The registration is ending October 25th. So just a heads up, snag your spot today. And it's going to be online, all on Zoom. And I mean, I'm so excited to see how God works through all of that. It's been a while since I've offered a course through Holistic Hearts, and I'm excited to see how this goes. All right. We have this beautiful series of deep waters, and we have talked about surrendering to that which our minds cannot understand, right? Our spirits have to rise up and trust that Holy Spirit is leading us. And again, as I share this testimony of my own journey in speaking in tongues and my understanding, my prayer is that it draws you closer to Holy Spirit to seek Him, to find Him, to open that door that Jesus is knocking. You're listening to this episode for a reason. And I want you to stay curious. Okay. So let's do a quick overview because we started out this series talking about how we're going to unpack the gifts of the spirit. So remember the gifts of the spirit are actually different than the fruit of the spirit, which we'll talk about at some point too. But one thing that I have been leaning into is the gifts of the spirit is literally a positioning of our own heart to receive something. The fruit of the spirit is when we are allowing the Lord to cultivate his spirit within us. And it's actually that abiding in him that the fruit of the spirit grows and comes into bloom. The gifts is, is a gift. It's a gift. So uh, I wanted to just do an overview real quick on how I have been researching. So Dr. Miles Monroe, he's a, been a big portion of this talk today. He, I encourage you to go find some stuff from him. He is, he, he is no longer living, but he did some incredible teaching on the gifts of the spirit. So I love how he breaks down that there are three categories of gifts and each of them speak to our human needs, which is so kind of God. One is, is seeing something that we need, saying something that needs to be seen, right? So saying something, doing something. So again, being heard and reveal something. So being known. So in my world, I love, if you've listened to holistic podcasting, you've heard me say, be seen, be heard, be known. And I love how the gifts of the spirit break down in that category too, because the speaking gifts, which is all something that we say, so it's the gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation. Then there are the action gifts, which they do something. They are going out and then most of the time it's through being heard, doing something. So the gift of faith, the gift of miracles, the gift of healings. And a gift of healings could be physical healing. It could be emotional healing. It could be marriage. It could be relationships, inner healing, psychological. So those are your action gifts. So we have the speaking gifts, we have the action gifts, and then we have the third, which is revelation gifts. And these are those incorporating anything that is known, right? It's revealing something, but it only happens in relationship with Jesus. We have to be connected to Holy Spirit. So those gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the word of discernment. So that's the overview. We've got the speaking something, we've got the doing something, and we've got the revealing something. And I just want to start here where most of what I've been reading has been out of First Corinthians. I really encourage you guys to do a deep dive into First Corinthians. I <laughs> just got a brand new Bible, an Amplified Bible, and I have already written all over the pages of First Corinthians because it is absolutely incredibly grounding in all of this conversation of the gifts of the spirit. So I encourage you to look it over specifically first Corinthians 14, which I am going to read some of this right now. All right. So pursue 
this love with eagerness. Make it your goal, yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church, but especially that you may prophesy, which means to foretell the future, to speak a new message from God to the people. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue, and this is what we're going to be talking about today, guys. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. For no one understands him or catches his meaning, but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries or secret truths and hidden things. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification, to promote their spiritual growth, and speak words of encouragement to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God, and speak words of consolation to compassionately comfort them. One who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. Now I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues, but even more, I wish that you would prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater and more useful than the one who speaks in tongues, unless he translates or explains what he says, so that the church may be edified, instructed, improved, strengthened. Now, believers, if I come to you speaking in unknown tongues, how will I benefit you unless I also speak to you clearly, either by revelation, revealing God's mystery, or by knowledge, teaching about God, or by prophecy, foretelling the truth, speaking a new message from God to the people? or by instruction, teaching precepts that develop spiritual maturity. Yet even lifeless things, whether flute or harp, when producing a sound, if they do not produce a distinct musical note, how will anyone listening know what is piped or played? And if the war bugle produces an indistinct sound, who will prepare himself for battle? So it is with you. If you speak words in an unknown tongue that are not intelligible and clear, how will anyone understand what you are saying? You'll be talking into the air, wasting your breath. There, I suppose, a great many kinds of languages in the world unknown to us, and none is lacking in meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will appear to be a foreigner to the one who is speaking, since he knows exactly what is saying, what is what he is saying, and the one who is speaking will appear to be a foreigner to me. So it is with you, since you are so very eager to have spiritual gifts and manifestations of spirit. Strive to excel in ways that will build up the church spiritually. Therefore, let one who speaks in tongue pray that he might be gifted to translate or explain what he says. For if I pray in tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive because it does not understand what my spirit is praying. Then what am I to do? I will pray with the spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me, and I will pray with the mind using words I understand, and I will sing with the, with the spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me, and I will sing with the mind using words I understand. Otherwise, if you bless and give thanks to God in the Spirit only, how will any outsider or someone who is not gifted in spiritual matters say amen of agreement to your thanksgiving since he does not know what you're saying? You are giving thanks well enough in a way that God is glorified, but the other person who does not understand you is not edified and spiritually strengthened since he cannot join in your thanksgiving. I thank God that I speak in unknown tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in public worship, I would rather say five understandable words in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue which others cannot understand. Brothers and sisters, do not be children, immature, childlike, in your thinking. Be infants in matters of evil, completely innocent and inexperienced, but in your minds be adults. It is written in the law, by men of strange tongues and by the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people and not even then will they listen to me. Therefore, unknown tongues are meant for supernatural sign, not to believers, but to unbelievers who might be receptive, while prophecy foretelling the future, speaking a new message from God to the people, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So then, if the whole church gathers together and all of you speak in unknown tongues and outsiders or those who are not gifted in spiritual matters or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? But if you all prophesy, foretelling the future, speaking a new message from God to the people, 
and an unbeliever or outsider comes in, he is convicted of his sins by all, and he is counted, called to account by all, because he can understand what is being said. The secrets of his heart are laid bare, and so falling on his face, he will worship God, declaring that God is really among you. When, then, is the right course, believers? When you meet together, each one has a psalm, a teaching, a revelation, a disclosure of special knowledge, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let everything be in constructive and edifying and done for all the good in all the church. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be limited to two or at the most three in each one speaking in turn and one that must interpret what is said. But if there is no one to interpret the one who wishes to speak in tongue must keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. I'm going to pause right there. That was almost all of first Corinthians 14. Wow. I, that might've sounded confusing. I may have lost you. You might've fallen asleep there for a second. But <laughs> I want you to hear there's a difference between, at least from what I'm seeing, there's a difference of there's a time where we have this gift of speaking in tongues in our own personal, private time with Holy Spirit. And how that happens is we all have Holy Spirit within us, right? Jesus said that the comforter will come. He will he will be within us, right? His, our body is his temple now, which means that the Holy Spirit resides within us. When we speak, there's power in how we speak. We've talked a lot about that here on Holistic Hearts on the power of our tongue. James 1, 4, right? We can, we can steer the ship by what we say out of our mouth. So when we are filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, go back, going back to Acts 2. Do you remember in Acts 2, they were filled by the Holy Spirit and then they began speaking in tongues. So number one would be asking for a daily filling of the Holy Spirit to fill you up. If you ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, he will. All good and perfect gifts come from above. So there's this beautiful gift of speaking in the spirit. And I know when I've been talking to Joshua, my husband about this, he grew up in a church that talked about this prayer language and this inner man. And it's this beautiful connection with Holy Spirit through this utterance. It's a verbal sound that comes out of us that we may not understand. If you remember me reading, it talked about how we may not know the meaning of the language, right? But let, let me see where it says it. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive because it does not understand what my spirit is praying. Our minds go into rest mode. They've actually done studies on this. They've watched a mind, a brain, while somebody is speaking in tongues and the brain lights up in a way that is so different than they've ever noticed before. It's super fascinating. I should probably find that study. I'll put it in the Facebook group. But that is really interesting. Our mind, it's almost like our minds get out of the way and our spirit rises up. And there are mysteries that he is speaking within us. He is revealing hidden truths, secret truths, hidden things. On verse two, it says, for no, for one who speaks in the unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. For no one understands him or catches his meaning, but the spirit, he speaks mysteries. By the spirit, he speaks mysteries, which is so cool. There's this beautiful connection and we may not never understand but the invitation, if you keep reading on, it says to pray for understanding of what you're, you are speaking in tongues. Now, I remember back when I first experienced speaking in tongues, I actually went to my husband's church when we were dating and I was, I was raised in the South and I love Southern roots. It is, it is my history. It is my legacy. And 
but I was not taught a lot about the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I know there's a lot of debate out there. I'm not here to do a theological debate, but I will tell you that at 21, when I walked into this charismatic church for the first time, and I saw people really baptized in the Holy Spirit, it actually kind of freaked me out. And I'm not saying that was right or wrong, but I think it's interesting as I've, I've read this first Corinthians 14 over and over again, one thing that is very abundantly clear is that unless he translates and explains what's been happening in the speaking in tongues, like that's where we need to pray is for this understanding and interpretation and over and over throughout 14 in first Corinthians, he talks about how it really is all about loving others. Right before this, everybody knows 1 Corinthians 13, right? Love, it's all about love. If we do any of these gifts without love, it's for nothing, right? All of these gifts are going to fade away, but not love, faith, and hope. So that means for right now, we are only seeing partial evidence of what's happening. So when we are in our own time and we are speaking in tongues, we are praying in tongues, that is the utterances of our inner spirit connecting with Holy Spirit. And and we get to ask for understanding to help bring edification, not only to ourselves in that time, but I think ultimately the reason why the Father is gifting us this specific gift and all of these gifts really is to pro profit all, whether they are believers or unbelievers. And it comes out either in prophecy or understanding or spiritual truth. And what's beautiful is that when you practice speaking in tongues in your own time, and I practice speaking in tongues, even though it is very weird, I will admit that. It is something that we have, we have done a great job of making it like woo-woo. You know what I mean? We, we steer away from this conversation. We, we are fearful of this conversation. We don't really typically want to talk about the gift of tongues because we don't understand it. But here's the invitation is the father wants to reveal hidden mysteries. So verse three, but on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification to promote their spiritual growth and speaks words of encouragement to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God and speaks words of consolation to compassionately comfort them. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but the one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, and holiness. It's for ourselves and for other people. When we are taking care of ourselves spiritually and we are, we are connecting with the throne room, the Holy Spirit within us and speaking in tongues, we get to lift up other people. We can speak words of encouragement. We can compassionately comfort them. I don't know about you, but that sounds like abundant living, right? Okay. There's a few things there. I also want you to go into the book of Acts is phenomenally examples of there's a debate on whether the sensationalism, and some of you might be way more scholared than I. However, I, I did some research through this process, and I think it's really fascinating to walk through the book's book of Acts to watch how Holy Spirit continues to show himself as available to bring these gifts, including this, this speaking in tongues. And forgive me if I feel like I'm a little all over the place because <laughs> I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, please help me put this in order 
and for people to understand because I want it to be clear. And I know I'm going to be held accountable for whatever I say here. And woo, that does that put you ever in your place? Um, and so the invitation again is for you to connect, for you to do this search, to you to hunger, to know what's true based off of love. So Acts 2, 4 is when we first hear about the filling of the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled, that is diffused through their being with the Holy Spirit it began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. So right here, this filling of the Holy Spirit it allowed them to actually speak in other languages. Now, I know there are so many amazing stories of people praying out loud in tongues in a church service and across the world, the, the result of that prayer is fulfilled. I remember hearing, oh gosh, when was that? Maybe 20 years ago, I think at Calvary Worship Center, I heard a story of that and I was like, what? <laughs> so when you start to open your eyes to how the Holy Spirit is moving, it really blows your mind. So again, Acts 2-4 is when the, the speaking in tongues starts to begin. And the Spirit is the one that gave them utterance. They began to speak out of within them after being in prayer, right? So then I want you to back up into Mark, Mark 16, when Jesus talks about when they are filled with the Holy Spirit, these acts will follow. Do, 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 do. Let me scan real quick. These signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. So what are the signs of when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Sorry, right before that verse, he's talking about go into the world and preach the gospel to all the nation. He who has believed in me and has been baptized will be saved from the penalty of God's wrath and judgment. But he who is not believed will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believed in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak new tongues. They will pick up serpents. So right here, Jesus is saying that there is actually a manifestation that happens when we have been baptized and these signs are going to follow. So speaking in tongues is mentioned right here. So if you believe in Jesus, you are qualified. You are qualified to speak in tongues. You are quali qualified to cast out demons. You are qualified to, to pick up serpents. And if they drink, if you drink anything deadly, it will not hurt you. And you will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. That's pretty phenomenal. Do we believe that? I know for me, that's really convicting. But the truth is, you are qualified according to Jesus. Now we're going to go into John 17. And Jesus is praying to the Father and verse 13, he says, but now I'm coming to you and I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may experience my joy made full and complete and perfect within them, filling their hearts with my delight. I have given to them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world and do not belong to the world, just as I am not of the world and do not belong to them. I'm going to fast forward all the way down to 20 well, 21, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. I've given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, you in me, that they may be perfected and completed into one so the world may know without any doubt that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you have loved me. Father, I have desired that they also whom you have given to me as your gift to me 
may be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. I have made your name, your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that they love with which you have loved me, maybe in them, overwhelming their heart, and I may be in them. So right there is Jesus continually saying, if you hear the verbiage in that, go back and read John 17. It's a process of continual filling over and over and over and over again. So it's not a one and done kind of thing. I think it's a continual practice of asking the Holy Spirit to fill you up, not in a work thing, not in a performance base, but there is a hunger, a, a calling for this living water to rise up within us. There is this beautiful song that my sister-in-law shared with me a couple months ago, and it's called Drink by Ty Bello. It is powerful. And it's just a simple song saying drink. And it's just talking about drinking of the Holy Spirit over and over and over again. So if you need a tangible place to start on what does it look like to drink from the Holy Spirit, to be baptized by by the Holy Spirit, to be filled like a sponge, like soaking up this beautiful Holy Spirit, then I encourage you to check out that song, Drink by Ty Bello. You have everything that you need because you have the Holy Spirit within you. You have God within you. And we get to receive and position ourselves, like I said at the very beginning of this episode, the gifts of the Spirit are all about receiving. It is receiving this Holy Spirit of God. Now, one more place in the Gospels that Jesus talks about, I mean, there's lots of places where Jesus talks about Holy Spirit, but another place I wanted to turn was in John 10, when he breathes over them, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Pardon me. It's not, it's not John 10, John 7. Jesus stood and called out in a loud voice. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who adheres in, trusts in, relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow continually rivers of living water. But he was speaking of the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him as Savior were to receive afterward. The Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified, raised to honor. So again, the Lord is, is saying that there is this gift that's going to be coming that is going to continually be rivers of living water. Again, here's that deep waters, you guys. Over and over, he's calling us to go into the deep waters. And there's another place in scripture, I can't find it right now, but where Jesus breathes on them to receive the spirit. And it's just, it's a gift, you guys. We have to be in this place of receiving. And I love one of the things that Miles Monroe, how he talked about what these gifts were and this like inner living waters that are constantly within us. Because if you believe in Jesus, you have these living waters within you. And one of the ways that he described it was we all, when we, we go to the kitchen sink and we turn on the faucet, we expect water to come out. Now that water is coming from the city where there are vast bins of water. It, it has water in it always. But that kitchen sink, it's turned off until we turn it on. It's our choice to receive that water. It's our turn to turn on that kitchen sink and watch the water flow. And one of those ways that we can receive this gift is by developing this gift of tongues, the speaking in tongues in our inner secret place in that prayer life so that we can turn on that water. Now, what is fascinating 
is, if you think about it, we are the only animals that can actually use our voice. Like we talk. There, language is used in humans only. Just think about that for a second. We are the only ones that can speak. Yes, your dog can bark. He can, I don't know, your cat can meow, all of those things. But it is not a language. And that is fascinating. And I think that there are spiritual and supernatural things that we just don't understand yet. But I truly believe, and we will talk about this when we talk about gift of faith, that our voice is more powerful than we could ever understand. And I believe that there is a reason. And maybe we won't understand the side of heaven, but I pray for understanding that our inner self, our spirit has a language that connects us with the spirit's indwelling presence within me. It edifies myself. And I think that there's such a sweetness in that factor or in that word of edifying It means to like encourage and build up. He knows that we need that building up. We need that living water to be filled. And it keeps us in our prayer lives. And and it keeps us aligning ourselves into his will. And another example that I heard was when we start to pray in tongues in our private space. It's like picking up the phone on a a three-way conversation between the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and they're all glorifying one another, and we get to hear this conversation. So that prayer in tongues is edifying ourselves, but then as we go into further conversation in that 1 Corinthians 14, there is a distinct difference of there is an edifying ourselves And then there's also an encouragement to others. So that's where the asking of understanding and understanding the gift. And there's like Paul, Paul lays out, there's actually rules (laughs) and order to this. I think what gets jarring and maybe we get a little bit like, Ooh, that's a little woo woo is that we've not done it well. And I think Paul lays out a beautiful example of there are, there are two ways of this language, this gift of tongues. One is like the Acts chapter two, where they're speaking different languages to other people in the world, which is totally supernatural. And then there's also the one edifying ourselves. So again, looking at Acts, I, I kind of forgot to go back to that point. <laughs> Sorry. So going through Acts, Acts chapter two is when that first happened when the Holy Spirit came and tongues were first used. And then if you fast forward, he continually uses the Holy Spirit and them speaking in tongues. I think it's Acts chapter 10 is when they, let's see, the Holy Spirit with great power and he went on and healed and speaking in tongues. Anyway, if you just keep reading through the Acts, they continually are filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they speak in tongues. They speak in different languages. And then they go out and they cast out demons. They raise the dead. They heal the sick. I mean, this is like a continual pattern throughout Acts. And this is like decades of Holy Spirit coming. And it has not stopped, you guys. It has not stopped. And I think that that's a sad way of looking at Holy Spirit. (laughs) He continues to be here. The invitation is still here. The invitation is still here to edify ourselves and to build up our church and to do it well. I by no means understand it all at all. I feel like the more I research, the more I'm like, what? But I want to pull myself up to this table to taste and see that he is good. And if there is a gift of being able to to speak out loud utterances of the spirit, I want to take it. 
And my prayer for you is that you would receive this gift of tongues. And it comes by being filled by the Holy Spirit and receiving that baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you receive his spirit and you allow it to rise up within you like that living water, that kitchen sink, that you would turn it on, turn that faucet on and do a deep dive into 1 Corinthians 14. It will blow your mind and read through Acts, how Holy Spirit manifested himself. It is called the book of Acts for a reason. There were manifestations of the Holy Spirit and he knew that we needed to see him hear him and, and know him, right? If we break down those gifts of the spirit, it is the gift of prophecy, tongues, and interpretation, right? Something to say. So speaking gifts, the action gifts, gift of faith, miracles, healings, and the revelation gifts, which is word of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. That's amazing. And I think it's amazing that we have this opportunity to connect with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. So I encourage you to, like I said many times, (laughs) to do your own research. I'd love to hear from you. And I know for me, when I first started researching this speaking in tongues, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? Does it mean I'm going to flail on the floor? (laughs) It might, but a lot of the times it's a sweet conversation, a quiet conversation of Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill me up with you. Give us a fresh filling today and he will meet you there. And what a glorious wonderful process that it is. And may he give us understanding to understand some deep mysteries and deep spiritual truths. All right. I know this for me was a challenge and exciting, and I'm so thrilled to have recorded. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I'm here if you want to discuss. I'm happy to discuss and feel free to join us in the coaching groups that are going to be starting here. And again, come and find us on Facebook. All right. I love you, my friend. Bless you. Let anything that was not of Holy Spirit fall away. And anything that is of him, Lord, I pray that it would take root in the soil of the hearts that are ready to receive you. Yes, Jesus. Amen.